Hey, babe. Yeah, they got me on under the protest. I know, I know. Listen, I'm wearing the color today, which is red. So any other cop who sees me will know I'm undercover, okay? I'm good. All right, I'll talk to you after. Going to the rally? Yeah. Call it a day. You know, I'm glad to be out here tonight. We need to get things in order out here. Make things right. Tell me about it. I'm tired of this bullshit. I've been out here six nights straight. It's getting worse if you ask me. Definitely. Some serious thugs out here. Criminals. Need to arrest a whole lot of them. Where are we gonna put them? Jails is full. Execute them for all I care. Hell, barbecue them. They pigs, ain't they? Pigs? You protesting? I thought you wanted a job. I look like 5 to you. You bugging. You're wearing the color today. I guess I didn't get that memo. Pigs? Really? It's like you said. It's getting worse on these streets. Cops are shooting first and asking questions. Never. The people got to do something. Wayhan Lu, Rafael Ramos. Those names supposed to mean something to me? It means something to me. Two officers, good men at the 8-4. December 20th, 2016, shot and killed while they sat in that patrol car. Just sitting there, shot dead, point blank range. That ain't right. I ain't saying that that's right. I'm putting wings on pigs today. Let's take one of ours, we'll take two of theirs. That's what the shooter wrote on Twitter right before he murdered them. You know, I'm putting wings on pigs today. And you wonder why cops are quick to strike first and ask questions later. I heard about that. I used to pass right by that corner on my way to the two train. You ever hear about any protests over that killing? I'm out here for my son. So he doesn't ever encounter someone like that. Someone who might just kill him without a second thought just because he looked at him the wrong way or because he bumped into him in the street. And I'm protesting so my son doesn't find himself under the knee of some racist big cop that has something to prove to all the other boys in blue. That's how my father died. From a cop? From some punk on the street. He spilled a cup of coffee on a girl right there in church in Flatbush. And her boyfriend shot him dead. I mean, he didn't even give him a chance to apologize. You know what was there for me that night? The NYPD. A cop named Franklin helped me that night. Made me want to be a cop. It ain't always like that. You know that better than anybody. It ain't always like that. I done lost mad friends from a police bullet, and their names never make the news. And now, with the eyes of the world on the cops, what do y'all do? Shoot tear gas at people? Hit them with clubs? Push an old man down and walk right by while his blood spills on the street and paints the sidewalk red? You know what? Y'all gangsters. Y'all real gangsters. Not, not the cops I know, not me. <laughs> not the cops you know. They in my neighborhood 24 seven and I don't know none of them because they got their badge numbers covered with black tape. Who does that? Somebody who is so ashamed of what they about to do that they have to hide that identity before they even step out on the street. You know what it's like working a peaceful protest? You ever had hundreds of people screaming at you, call you names, insult you while you just stand there Son, I had a white woman six inches away from my face screaming, Black Lives Matter at me like she's educating me about something I don't know. I'm pretty sure that was Karen. Look, I don't know who invited her. I just know it wasn't me. <laughs> but, but then there's the bricks. There's nothing to smile about 
when a brick smashes into the back of your head from some punk who doesn't have the courage to stand behind what he's doing. Some punk who attacks from inside a crowd. You tell me what kind of man hides in a sea of a thousand faces and attacks another man like that. This train ain't coming, I'm calling a squad car. Stay safe. You too, brother. it look like it might be the year of the ballot or the bullet because Negroes have listened to the trickery and the lies and the false promises of the white man now for too long and they're fed up they've become disenchanted they've become disillusioned they've become dissatisfied and all of this makes the black community throughout America today more explosive than all of the atomic bombs the Russians can ever invent Whenever you got a racial powder keg sitting in your lap, you're in more trouble than if you had an atomic powder keg sitting in your lap. When a racial powder keg goes off, it doesn't care who, it knocks out the way. Understand this, it's dangerous. And in 1964, this seems to be the year.